Hey everyone. Okay. So if you have a child with ODD, OCD, tics, Tourette's, anything in between, uh, understanding the causes is what will help you to address them so that your child can overcome these challenges. So today we're going to talk about kind of overall causes and factors, and I'm going to start giving you some take home things that you can start doing today. Like literally you can do these things today, this weekend and so forth and start putting them into place. Um, obviously these are not going to be, uh, the thing that's going to totally get your child over that mountain, so to speak, but this is definitely the starting point. So in terms of biochemical causes and triggers, um, the first place you want to look is the obvious. So looking at the gut, um, looking at food sensitivities and so forth. Usually if there's food sensitivities, it's because there is issues with the gut, like biochemical or, or uh, microbiome imbalance, I should say, as well as leaky gut. So those factors are definitely something you want to address. Um, I am not a fan of immediately jumping to food sensitivity panel testing. And the reason for that is because if you find out your child has 30 food sensitivities, which can commonly happen when kids are struggling, the goal is not to eliminate those 30 foods, really. I mean, we might do that temporarily, but the goal is to really focus on healing the gut so that the immune system isn't being triggered by foods that are generally healthy. So I like to start with gut healing first before I start jumping into food sensitivity panel testing because testing gets expensive. For a lot of us, we're paying out of pocket for this and um, it can definitely get expensive when you start adding in other tests I think can be much more relevant or helpful. Uh, toxins like heavy metals or pesticides and even food coloring. Um, so obviously all of those things are really going to affect the immune system ability to self-regulate or not even self-regulate, I should say to modulate and, and function optimally. And also these toxins and so forth are just going to drive up inflammation in the brain. So it's really, really important to address, um, to look at, investigate, uh, heavy metal toxicity, pesticide toxicity, toxicity, and all those other minor-ish compared to pesticides and heavy metals, like um, food coloring, additives, preservatives, all of that type of stuff. And the more you can kind of take those irritants and, you know, things that are, tr are triggers in terms of creating inflammation, the better off your child's going to be. Um, these things are usually, again, it's not just one thing, it's usually multiple things that need to be addressed. Oftentimes these kids have issues with high histamine. If that's a factor, then you want to look into, again, gut health is huge. Is there mold? Um, there are genes that contribute that can affect um, our ability to regulate histamine. It doesn't mean it's helpless. Um, I know that my family has that. And, you know, it's not like we all are walking around with crazy high histamine issues. There's things you can do to circumvent that, to kind of um, keep those genes from being expressed or to tone them down, let's put it that way. And obviously food sensitivities or even environmental allergies as well will drive up the histamine level. So histamine is excitatory to the brain. I've talked about this in a previous video on why kids get can get worse in the spring. Um, so you want to look at how can you reduce histamine in my program. We like to do that if necessary for temporary measures to put out some fire, so to speak, with certain anti natural antihistamines. Um, and then the other factor most commonly with OCD and Tourette's is pans and pandas. Um, this, I've talked about this before, this is the dysregulation of the immune system. Um, and I wanna make that really clear because I was actually just talking to a mom yesterday who uh, found out that her daughter most likely has pandas. They're doing a bit more research and testing to confirm. And she said to me, so the solution then is just to take like a whack of antibiotics, right? And I'm like, eh. Um, so I don't want to say no. I definitely need to work with your doctor or, um, you know, one who hopefully is knowledgeable in pandas or pans. I'm not a doctor, but uh, anything in functional medicine will tell you that you need to absolutely regulate and modulate the immune system. So that means you need to find out why the immune system is responding the way it is to things like strep, um, or, or maybe it's some kind of virus that's, you know, activated within your child and why the immune system is having a hard time keeping it in check. And usually underlying that are things like mold or mold toxicity, um, heavy metal toxicity. You know, there's a lot of different factors that come into play. So 
Pandas and pans is a dysregulation of the immune system. And just like OCD ticks and Tourette's, it gets worse over time with each subsequent flare as the brain inflammation increases. So I always like to just remind people that brain inflammation can affect or even cause damage to the tissue in the brain. However, no need to freak out because I remember being that mom freaking out going, oh my goodness, my daughter's getting brain is her brain is being damaged. We can heal damaged brain tissue, right? Um, when we nourish it, get that um, inflammation down and the body has an incredible ability to repair itself and regenerate and so forth. Okay. Another factor that is not biochemical, but is huge when it comes to ticks, Tourette's and OCD. And I find is not talked about even in uh, the world of naturopaths and functional medicine. And I mean, no disrespect uh, that way. It's just that it's um, a little bit different that it's like applied functional neurology. And that refers to the left brain overdevelopment. So I talk about this quite a bit left brain is the gas, right brain is the brakes. So with these kids, almost always they have a left brain overdevelopment. Um, think about it. You have too much gas. You're going to have difficulty overriding um, motor and vocal comp compulsions, overriding or putting the brakes on obsessive thoughts, um, you know, or compulsions that, you know, in terms of habits and so forth. And that also means you're going to have too much gas on your immune system or on your child's immune system. So that can result in hyperimmunity where your child's going to overreact to environmental exposures like food proteins, pathogens, all of that type of stuff. So, you know, keep that in mind in terms of, you don't want to just look at it from a biochemical perspective. If you've kind of hit a wall, which a lot of my clients sometimes end up um, when they come to me is they hit a wall because they've done some of the biochemical stuff, but they haven't done the brain retraining. And so if you do all this lovely biochemical stuff, but you're not developing that weaker right hemisphere, there's always just going to be too much gas. And so you might always be kind of dealing with, oh man, is there going to be a flare or there's a possible flare that might not be as severe, but you're still, um, you know, not optimal. And my goal is always, let's make this as, the, let's make this the best that we can make it in terms of either managing the situation or overcoming the challenge. Okay. So uh, what you really need to do then is you need to approach this with a multi-therapy approach. So number one is you need to reduce and eliminate the triggers. Number two, you need to reduce the inflammation to improve symptoms. And as mentioned, to prevent any further injury or damage, if you will, to certain tissue in the brain. And then you can work on that and so forth. And number three, you want to regulate the immune system via drainage, detoxification, gut healing, right? Repairing the leaky gut um, and stimulating that weaker brain hemisphere on the right side so that you don't have a left brain overdevelopment anymore. So what can you do today? Simple things. First line of action, a straightforward measure you can do at home is number one. Um, I know this is going to send some people into a bit of a um, spiral, but avoiding or limiting video games as much as possible. So video games actually really, really, really stimulate the left side of the brain. And it's no coincidence that left brain overdeveloped kids tend to be really good at video games and tend to be very drawn to video games. And so that's kind of just creates the perfect storm because then it further stimulates and develops their left brain. So as much as possible, you want to wean, reduce, and possibly even eliminate, if that's possible, uh, video games and all of those types of, you know, anything, wh whether it's on a TV screen or whatever, those types of gaming that a lot of our kids like to do. Uh, number two, so eliminate inflammatory foods. First of all, I want to say I'm not a fan of rigid restrictive diets for kids. I don't find they work or I don't, I don't find they're realistic. Um, so I try to find a middle ground in my program. We're very much focused on what is your child already eating? How can we make it more nutrient dense? How can we crowd out slowly the foods that we really prefer them not to be eating? Um, however, if you're dealing with a pretty serious case of OCD, um, pandas, Tourette's, ticks, whatever the case may be, and you highly suspect inflammation is at play, which it likely is in this situation, then you do want to really try to eliminate, um, reduce, and then work towards total elimination of inflammatory foods like dairy, gluten, corn, and soy. It doesn't mean you have to eliminate or reduce for the rest of their life. Um, but until you get that inflammation down, that immune system modulated, and that right hemisphere of the brain stimulated and better developed, it might feel like 
you're always going to be on this roller coaster until you get those things in place and so forth. So reducing that inflammation is really, really critical. So that's why <clears throat> detoxing, drainage, getting rid of the pesticides, the heavy metals, um, you know, clearing all of that, that gunk, so to speak. And then also the foods that they're eating are, we're not adding in inflammatory foods and we're actually increasing foods that are anti-inflammatory. So that is suggestion, suggestion number two, suggestion number three, omega threes, very straightforward and simple, but it does get overlooked, um, off more often than I would expect. So this is really critical to the brain and the nervous system, very nourishing, anti-inflammatory and so forth. Um, so a good quality omega three, um, that is triple tested, you know, third party with no heavy metals and all of that type of stuff is key. Number four, magnesium. I can't stress this enough. <laughs> um, when our kids are in the state that they're in with OCD ticks and Tourette's, they're most likely in sympathetic dominance, meaning they are in fight or flight and their nervous system is on high alert and they're burning through magnesium like crazy. Um, it's very much utilized when we are stressed and it's used for 300 different functions in the body. So you want to make sure your child is getting enough magnesium. I would start off with like magnesium glycinate. Um, another one is B vitamins. So studies show that certain B vitamins are really helpful to alleviate ticks and compulsions. And they are also very helpful. We go th during stress. We also burn through our B vitamins pretty quickly when we're stressed. So you want to be careful with B vitamins. You want to make sure they're the right quality, they're, they're the right kind and quality is key for your child. Um, you want to avoid anything with folic acid. Um, I don't even like the synthetic B6 that is even in pretty good quality kind of brands, um, oftentimes, which is B6 pyridoxine, um, you want to look for P5P. So you want to look for methylfolate or folate, not folic acid. And you want to look for just really clean, um, B vitamins, cause that could be making things worse if they're taking folic acid, acid, which is synthetic. Lastly, um, Epsom salt baths are just a really wonderful way to detox kids. Most kids are not opposed to taking baths. Um, and it's just a great way to get some extra magnesium into our kids via the skin. It's super bioavailable and it helps with sleep. It helps with promoting calm. And it's just a wonderful detoxer. If your kid responds negatively to a detox bath, it can indicate that they're super toxic. Um, it can also indicate there's issues genetically with their sulfation pathways, which I'm not getting into today. Most kids are fine with it though. And sometimes it's just not doing too much ups and salts. I would start with a, you know, child who's say seven or eight years old, maybe half a cup to a cup. Um, adults, the typical recommendation is two cups of Epsom salt. So, you know, if someone's reacting to that, my first step would be to reduce and see if they can better tolerate a smaller amount. So those are my kind of recommendations for first line of action of which when you're wondering where do I freaking start? Um, I'm going to be talking in my next video about next line of action, which is definitely going deeper. And as you'll hear in that video involves definitely working with a practitioner. I wouldn't advise doing those steps on your own. Um, okay. So I will talk about that in my next video for now. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone take care of yourselves, moms who are watching. And, and I know that I have some dads, a few dads who watch as well. And, uh, as usual, I will post a link to book a free clarity call in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about our six month program. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye.